have to break the cycle. We have to change the way people relate to each other. So I think that this event is really important for us to be able to demonstrate to people that a new way of seeing into each other rather than looking at each other is possible. People just assume that Jews, Christians and Muslims um, see the sin of Sodom uh, as sodomy, as homosexuality. Um, that was never the understanding in Judaism of what the sin of Sodom was. Sheer herd waters had pride, excess of food and prosperous ease, but did not aid the poor. مَا سَبَقَكُمْ بِهَا أَحَدٌ مِنَ الْعَالَمِينَ says the Quran. Nobody else before you has done that abomination. Overwhelmingly proud of their numbers and the extent of their wealth. Refusing hospitality to, to raping strangers. She and her daughters had pride, excess of food and prosperous ease. Those who interpret and it's always interpretation, they will say, the Bible says, and forget the context in which the scriptures were written. In Paul the Romans, the word homosexual did not exist. For a good reason, because that term has been invented by doctors and psychologists. It, in fact, does not occur in the scriptures, as we find it. So that's not about homosexuality. It's not quoted in the Quran. And what is described in the Quran is, is totally different. There's so much to say about Sodom and Gomorrah. And, and, and the fact that you cannot you can textualize our scriptures. They felt compassion towards me, but they felt obliged as Muslims to reject me. Most tolerant and compassionate people I've met didn't necessarily belong to any religion and could understand my story and made me feel like validated. You know? And those were, in my journey, those were not religious people. Kinders word gekraakt. Die kinders word afgebreek. Even to you as a granny, yeah. it's heartbroken yeah. to look, look at your grandchild mm -hmm. every morning when he or she is supposed to be happy to go to work. Yeah. Oh. But no, they're not. Mm. They don't even want to go to church, but even they, they're not welcome. Yeah. How, do we, how do people like you make sure that other leaders in the very important positions in the community are able to then be compassionate as people? And it's always been very strange to me that I can bless somebody's house, somebody's motor car, there's a ship, but I can't bless two people who want to ask God's grace. And I think the understanding certainly from uh, Islam is that it's asking a blessing. It's not in the same way as with Christians would understand it as a sacrament of what happens. So maybe there is that kind of difference there. But there's no religion, I think, anywhere unless it is perverted, that would call for anything except for tolerance, acceptance, and inclusion. Uh, sometimes people use the scriptures in order to condemn others. When we speak of tolerance, I don't like the word, actually. Tolerance means I'm going to put up with you. Or I'll put up with you. That's not, that's not love. That's not love, that's not compassion, that's not respect. And so if the, we go to the core of, of Jewish values around this, and I think it's all, all the faiths really, as, as, as uh, the learned panel has expressed, all the faiths intrinsic in, in religious thinking is that issue of deep concern and humanity and compassion is basic to us and it embraces the other. How do we extend the conversation beyond the people who agree with us? Beyond the people who understand why this is so important? 
and not the people who hate just yet, not the people who are standing behind their walls and defending their territory just yet, but those people that we know have listened, that it's broken through, that there are cracks that we can widen, that there's an experience that we can give to those people that will allow them to shift their own humanity. The deep peace of the flowing air to you, the deep peace of the silent earth to you, the deep peace of the moon night now to you, the deep peace of the shining stars to you, and the deep, deep peace of the sun of peace to you. Hey.